Hello and welcome to Tech Post Guides and today in this video I am going to unbox the Gigabyte Z490 UDAC ATX motherboard for the 10th generation Intel Core processors. And now that my PC is complete, I will also share my review of this motherboard, so keep watching. So this is all new Gigabyte Z490 ATX motherboard. This is called the Altar Durable and comes with inbuilt Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's what the AC stands for. However, you can also buy the non-Wi-Fi UD motherboard. For detailed specs and best buy links, you can refer to the links in the description cause in this video, I will talk about the most important things and why I bought this. So I built our 10th generation i5 10,400 powered Hackintosh with RX 590 graphics card on this Z490 motherboard. I know, I know, I could have bought the Z460 and saved money, but my plan is to upgrade my system in near future with either a 10th generation i7 10700K series Intel processor to unlock the full potential or the 11th generation Intel CPU. Yes. You heard it right. The 400 series chipset will also support the next gen, that is 11th generation Intel CPUs and so this makes this motherboard a bit future proof. I did not build a Ryzen PC and I have my reasons for that, that I'll share in another video. So this board gets 3 M.2 PCI slots, one of which and that's the middle one which supports the M.2 SATA SSD. The other two only supports NVMe SSDs, so currently I have installed a Samsung 860 EVO M.2 SSD drive with WD Blue SN550 500GB NVMe SSD. Although the price of both drives is almost same, but there's a reason why I purchased the M.2 SATA SSD instead of NVMe and that is Hackintosh. I bought this motherboard to build a Hackintosh and uh, this my friend can be used to build a stable Catalina Hackintosh. I'm currently running it. Plus it's also one of the cheapest Z490 motherboard that you can get right now. So if you are planning to build a PC, a 10th generation PC based on Intel processors and also want or would like to try out the Mac OS or want to build a Hackintosh. This board will make your life easier and the process of hackintoshing the system much more easier. Take the case of my build. Everything is working perfectly fine. But as I have said, I have installed the M.2 SATA SSD. That's for the Mac OS because Mac OS is not stable on NVMe drives and I had a few sleep and wake issues with the NVMe drives and that's why I moved my Mac OS installation from the NVMe drive to this 860 EVO SSD and now it's working perfectly fine. Everything from DRM, graphic acceleration, audio, network, USBs, everything is working perfectly fine. But the inbuilt Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth doesn't work and that's for the obvious reasons as it's from the Intel and so I need either a Broadcom or a Fenvi network adapter to get the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Although I don't need it, I use Ethernet port to connect to the internet. However, if you need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you can also use a cheap Wi-Fi dongle like this and use it to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Now the motherboard comes with PCIe 4 grade hardware. So these Z490 motherboards from Gigabyte are quite future proof but you won't be able to take its full advantage currently. It supports 2-way quad GPU AMD Crossfire configuration, no SLI although I'm never going to uh, use two graphic cards in this. You also get 6 SATA ports to connect hard drives and configure RAID, it supports RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5 and RAID 10. Also you can connect up to 128GB dual channel RAM and it supports XMP 2.0 profile which means you can overclock RAM up to 4500MHz or even above. It also supports the RGB Fusion 2.0 and as you can see all RGB fans are synchronized with the Fusion 2.0. And these dual ring RGB fans are Antec Spark 120. In my opinion, these are the best and most affordable RGB fans that you can get and control via motherboard. 
I just love the build quality and even replaced my deep cool GTE V2 CPU cooler fan with one of the Antec Spark 120. I'll create a separate review of these fans. But the good thing is that even if you shut down or run any other OS, the set color or the pattern will stay and come up as you power on the system. Now there is no USB Type-C port on this particular motherboard and I don't want that unless it's a Thunderbolt port although you get two Thunderbolt pin connectors in this motherboard so if you want you can buy a Thunderbolt card and add it to your motherboard. Anyways we get two connectors for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna and by the way this motherboard comes with a magnetic external antenna that you can place anywhere on the cabinet. Then there's one HDMI port, there's no display port and then there are usual USB ports and a gigabit ethernet port. All working fine with the Hackintosh build except the Wi-Fi. So this ultra durable series are well built and are set to last longer but I don't know how longer I will use them but the quality of this gigabyte motherboard is quite solid. If you like this video make sure to hit the like and also subscribe for more upcoming videos on this build and Hackintosh guide. This time I have used the open core not the clover to Hackintosh this particular build. So stay tuned and if you have any question or want to know something specific about this motherboard do ask me via comments down below. I will see you in my next video.